coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. 2017 was a terrible year for everyone. Everyone but Nintendo. It's the 2017 year in review. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, joined as always by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how you doing? I'm doing great. You ready to say goodbye and so long to 2017? Yeah, see you later, sucker. So, yeah. We're moving on. See you never. <laughs> yeah. We're uh, like the gals of nine to five. We're moving on to better things. Mm, it's, is that something they do? Well, I mean... They, they move on? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think so. Or I mean, in their lives, I think they are at the company at the end of the movie, but in a much better position. I don't know. It's been a long time. They get raises or promotions. or <laughs> Presumably. Here's what I bet happens. Okay. Have, you, have you not seen the movie I, ever? No, no, no. I have seen it. Okay. Um, here's what I bet happens is that they get more responsibility uh, and they get raises, but not really commensurate with their increased responsibilities. I'm just saying I've had jobs before. <laughs> I know how it works. <laughs> um. Nine to five, uh, I love that opening lyric that uh, uh, tumble out of bed and, oh, I can't remember it now. Tumble out of bed and uh, pour myself a cup of ambition. Yeah. Whatever it is. It's a great song. D- Dolly Parton's a national treasure. Yep. Uh, we should all, we should cherish the time that we have with her. Uh, but Mark, that's not what we're doing here today. No. We, we are celebrating slash putting to bed 2017. Uh, great year for Nintendo. Good year for video games in general, I think. Um, but kind of a disaster, a garbage pile of a year for basically just everything else. Luckily, we're a Nintendo podcast. That's right. Uh, and so, so our scope is happy. That's right. We don't need to talk about anything else except for Dolly Parton and Nine to Five. <laughs> uh, r- before we jump into that, though, uh, we want to just uh, thank everyone who's taking the opportunity to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Um, if you haven't done that yet, it's cool. We would like you to do it. We would love for you to do it. We would love for you to do it. I mean, it kind of passed by and we didn't make mention of it, but we've been doing this show for over a year now. That's true. Over a year. Mark. I guess that was another good thing about 2017. Yeah, that's was right. The show, uh-huh. the show. We don't need to be so dour about everything outside of, you know, the switch. Oh, right, right. <laughs> Other positive things happened this year. Um, here's another thing that positive thing that could happen this year. You could follow us on Twitter. We're at NinCart Society. Facebook page is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. And if uh, you have anything else that you want to contribute to this conversation, ask us any questions like that, you can email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Mark, what else can they send to that email address? They can send their physical mail address. Mm-hmm. What happens then? At, at some point in the future, they will receive your copy of Sonic Forces. That's right. Or the Nintendo Switch. I would like to lend my copy of Sonic Forces to whomever would like to borrow it. It's already been on a couple exciting adventures. And your house could be the next exciting adventure it goes on. I send it to you free of charge with a return envelope, also free of charge to you. All you got to do is play the game or not play the game and then drop it back in the mail to me. And that's it. You have a good time. Play Sonic Forces and not spend a dime on it. That's the best way to play Sonic Forces. Uh, Some would argue it is the only appropriate way to play Sonic Forces. Um, We don't need to talk about Sonic Forces in our year in review, do we? We've... Right? Right. Right. I agree. Yeah. No, no, no. Why would we... I mean... Look, we'll just say now, before we start the conversation, Sonic Forces came out in 2017, end of story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're looking... If you uh, started this episode in hopes Mm -hmm. that it would be an in-depth discussion on how the release of Sonic Forces altered the course of 2017, I'm sorry, this is not the podcast for you. This is not the podcast. Can you recommend a podcast? (laughs) Yeah, check out our sister podcast, Mm -hmm. uh, also hosted by Patrick and I, Mm -hmm. uh, Sonic Forces Game Cart Society. Right. It's, it's a, you know, we ran out of steam on the name, but you know, it's, we talk a lot of Sonic Forces. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's about a year's worth of episodes of that as well. Mark, let's get into this topic. (laughs) 
my god, the year that was 2017 for Nintendo. Yeah, when we were uh, trying to put this episode together, decide what to talk about, it felt daunting because yeah. so much happened this year. I think one of the the first big thing that happened in the year, which would then set the tone for the rest of the year, right, is this big uh, Switch reveal event that happened in January, right? Um, we had been, when we started this show, which was like, what, September or yeah, something? Yeah, I think late September. September of 2016. Um, you know, we, our very first episode is titled No More NX Rumors, because you and I, uh, who we had been privately talking about whatever Nintendo's new system was going to be. Um, and we're like, okay, that's it. We're going to, we're going to stop just like talking out our butts about, uh, what the switch or what the NX might be. Um, and there was that little teaser trailer, uh, that was like October and then nothing about it, nothing about it, nothing about it until January. In January, we did not know when this thing was coming out. Right. Right. We knew that it had been delayed from holiday 2016, but was still planning or was still planned for release n- the end of Nintendo's fiscal year, which right. was which would have been March the end of 31st. March. Right. But you know, like they guarant- they kept saying it was going to come out by then, but who, who knew? knew? Who they- knew? It had been delayed a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so th- this this event rolls along, and uh, it's weird, right? Like we we get we see a bunch of like newer Nintendo create not newer, but like not it's it's not the same old guard, right? Like. Um, and I guess it, sort of by necessity, you know, we don't have Satoru Wada anymore. Um, but like, um, Miyamoto wasn't on stage, right? He, he was part of like a, a, a pre-filmed thing, but, uh, um, we were seeing people like Koizumi and, um, I, Aonuma wasn't there either, right? I don't think so. I think he was also part of like a, a pre-taped, um, thing, but like it did, the, the whole presentation had this like kind of, uh, new nintendo energy to it well i also think it's hard to remember now that we're at the end of this year yes that just like the momentum behind nintendo now Mm -hmm. versus the beginning of the year is completely different yes so whereas now the switch is a uh success and nintendo seems to be firing on all cylinders Mm -hmm. in at the end of 2016 they were kind of coming off maybe one of their worst years ever. Yeah, I mean, certainly for... I mean, wh- the the kind of games that we were talking about in 2016, like Nintendo games, you know, uh, Color Splash and um, uh, Star Fox. Yeah, like, not bad games. Not but bad games, but, like... Kind of the bottom of Nintendo's barrel. Yeah. It's a nice barrel. You'll want to be in it. Oh, yeah. But you've reached the bottom. And if you find a monkey in there, that monkey friend is going to follow you. <laughs> But you know, it's not it's not the best barrel. Uh and so this like Switch presentation, it was the first time we were really like seeing the Switch and honestly, it was a weird presentation. Right. Because you And ha- long too. Long, weirdly paced. You had because they were doing it like live and not pre-recorded like they do a lot of directs. There was like a language barrier. Mm-hmm. And so the audio was on a it was like they were on different channels. And so it was yeah. like quiet and awkward, you know, like, and then you would have the translator, like it was the UN or something, trying to keep up with the person that was talking. It, it like, you had the whole Suda 51 thing. Like, every, it was oh, yeah. just such a weird presentation. Suda 51, if uh, you didn't watch this thing, Suda 51 is uh, the producer of um, No More Heroes and kind of a notoriously weird game producer. Um, and, you know, he just totally went off script and the translator. Had couldn't keep up with him. Had no idea what he was gonna say or what he was saying, um, and so that whole you know suit is up there for like three minutes, and the translator's like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. And we also saw like one two switch for the first time. Yeah. So this is, yeah, yes, we saw one two switch for the first time, which is now but a, a distant memory, right? Like everyone stopped talking about one two switch basically the week the system came out. Yeah, I, but at the time it was like, oh, this is this is their Wii Sports. This yeah. is what they're using as like the selling point for the system. Little did we know, right? The selling point of the system was the system itself and Great uh, the best Zelda game ever made. <laughs> the, it, it, yes, the hardware is super great, but I think 
it, it really took having the system in people's hands for um, like the form factor to make sense. Because I, th- I think when the, when the presentation happened, we were all maybe a little bit afraid that like it was going to feel like a, uh, a 3DS or a, that like the screen wasn't going to be, you know, of, of high quality or that like it was going to feel like a toy um, or whatever. And like, really, if you go back and listen to our like impressions, our first like hands-on impressions of the Switch, um, we'll say that a bunch of times that like just holding the thing feels good. Um, and like, it's, you know, packaged like a, like an Apple product, you know, where it just like it, there's the system itself. Like when you open the box, there it is sitting alone. Um, and like, we just, we didn't know that yet. You know, we we're we're still in like kind of a, a trepidatious point uh, when this, when this presentation happens, Mark, do, can you remember like, I mean, we're on record <laughs> on this podcast <laughs> yeah. having, having uh, live reactions to it, but can you like, remember back to what you thought about it at the time i i think my memory of it is that we were both like super on board for it and of course we host a nintendo podcast so we were pretty much already in the bag for whatever they were going i mean sure and and you know we we are nintendo fans like through and through i own a wii u um i i like how that i mean you're not wrong but i like how that is like a badge of like you've been through war yes Look, look, man, I own a Wii U. <laughs> you were there for the dark times. I was there for the dark times. Uh, but even then, I think we were impressed. I distinctly remember, like, in our uh, predictions of what it was going to be, I was pretty sure it was going to be, like, 250 max, 199 We really thought Nintendo was going to, oh, yeah, yeah. like, shock us with the pricing. And so when it was $299, uh, I think I was a little taken aback now it seems totally worth it yeah yeah i mean because it because it is the <clears throat> the place where i want to play all my games yeah um so yeah 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 um but this like oh, empty crazy. like hardware as nice as the switch actually is mm-hmm. it would be nothing without games right to and, play on it right and so uh, this is also the time when they were like and here comes breath of the wild which we knew was going to be coming out we I think had assumed that it was that it was going to be a, a launch title, but I mean, before this presentation, we didn't know the release date of Zelda, right? And we didn't know the release date of the Switch. So, like, you know, we were living in a world where like it could have come out. They they may may not have launched together. But this is also where we learned about Splatoon two, correct? I th- well, yeah, it was because the guy was doing like the weird. Oh, that's right. He was doing in like <laughs> right. the Squid Research Lab. It was our first introduction to the Squid Squid Research Lab. Right. We had seen some footage of uh, Splatoon two in the um in the like short trailer that came out the year before, but it wasn't clear that that's what it was. Right. Nobody knew if it was like a remake, a or, remake, yeah. or like a Splatoon Deluxe, like Mario Kart Eight Deluxe ended up being. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and is. Is this also where we saw the first, where we got our first, um, like, inkling of arms? Ugh, I, it must have been. It must it have been, because when, when else would it have been? Yeah. Um, is it, there's just so much stuff that uh, would come to define, like, the year in Switch. Nothing at that time about Mario Odyssey. Um, we well, that, that's when we saw New Donk City for the first time, though. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. It was that weird reveal where, again, everybody was kind of like, oh, interesting. It looks like Super Mario 64 a little bit, but also what are what's with these weird people walking around? Yeah, that's right. What and is Mario doing with humans? Isn't Mario human? Like, what's going on? Right. Little did we know that the Metro Kingdom would become our favorite thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. I kind of feel like that's like the theme of Nintendo the entire year, where in the beginning, we're like, what is this? Uh, and then, <laughs> and then by the end, we're like, "Oh yeah, this is my favorite thing." Yeah, yeah, but w- with a definite like front leading, "What is this?" And the, <laughs> the oh yeah, heavy emphasis, heavy on the, on the "What is this?" I mean, because you you remember from this presentation, that's when they're like showing off the HD Rumble, and I mean, like you can have three ice cubes in your Joy-Con or two, and we're like, "What?" is going on uh, but but that is a good example of where you're just like yeah okay that's cool whatever like how many games have taken advantage of the ir sensor 
how many take yeah, games and like taking adventure you know advantage of how many ice cubes you have in sure but your i do Joy-Con. i do find that uh like hd rumble is something that um i think is better it's it's a nice feature and like i uh the the tactile feedback is actually more interesting than i was giving it credit it's not like a game changer in any capacity but like when i go back to playing like playstation and it's just like oh yeah the thing rumbles or it doesn't um like i feel the lack of uh the the more more tactile feedback again it's not a big deal but it, it is something that i've noticed uh in in going back but i i think in general like that first presentation was an interesting peek at the year to come whether we knew it really or not at the time what that would mean but the switch was really only part of nintendo's hardware story uh, and and just a part of like nintendo's story story period right cuz um, it was a big year for uh, Nintendo's mobile efforts, right? Um, Fire Emblem uh, Heroes came out in f- February. In February, yeah. Uh, we we got that like direct about it, and then it was again another like, what is this? Because it was confusing as to when it was coming out, um, and then like actually did come out uh, that that same time, and then um, Mario Run received uh, like added uh, levels and a new yeah, game like, mode and like stuff. Two point update. Yeah, um, which brought me back to it for sure. Um, and then uh, the Animal Crossing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, not like a, a packed, not like a wall to wall year in uh, mobile gaming, but like a significant presence, right? I think it was another one of those like clarifying years, kind of, mm-hmm. where we had had Super Mario Run. There was a $10 purchase. Uh, it kind of had a rocky launch, even though it was a fun game. Mm-hmm. And. But what, like, the future of Nintendo's mobile titles looked like was still unclear. And I feel like Fire Emblem was, like, a clarifying moment, at least for now. Sure. Where we're like, oh, it's going to be kind of a variation on a full game, but with lots of microtransactions. Yeah, and I think there's still, like, there's still room for it to be any or none of those. You know, like, that the next... Uh, Nintendo uh, game that comes out on mobile could be like Mario or could be like Fire Emblem, and I wouldn't be surprised. I think that's totally true. I think like just because Fire Emblem and Animal Crossing are what mobile titles are now does not mean that the yeah. next one is going yeah. to be different. Especially because those two games like f- play so well into that kind of like gotcha mechanic or like you know paying for the leaf tickets or or whatever that makes so much sense in uh in a mobile platform do we do we have other ideas of of what uh future mobile games are are there's rumors of like an rpg one Mm -hmm. and so some people are uh speculating that it's xenoblade related okay (laughs) and then Zel- I think the Wall Street Journal was also reporting that they're working oh, on a Zelda. Zelda thing. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's, you know, uh, an RPG would be a, a kind of a weird fit for uh, that kind of like pay to pay to win or pay to keep playing kind of. I mean, would it? Isn't that basically what Fire Emblem Heroes is? Maybe. Fire Emblem Heroes has that like uh, collecting mechanic, though, of like you're gathering these warriors. And so like that makes sense to me that like you're getting something. Um but I mean, you know, may, may, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe like leveling up characters can be basically the same thing. Well, I no, I think more it would be like your um pain to get armor and your pay or you know like sure, lottery real from money. like armor yeah. or uh weapons and things like that. So good year for Nintendo at mobile. I don't know. Uh, you know, we have tried all of these games mm-hmm. and had varying amounts of fun with all of them yeah are, I don't you, are you still playing animal crossing i am a little bit this is it's actually probably the nintendo mobile title that i return to the most the most frequently as just like something mindless to do while i'm uh watching tv or something like that yeah yeah but i i don't think any of the titles have been as successful as they hoped sure well fire emblem made a lot of money though I think they make, like, I think all of them make decent, decent sure, amounts sure. of money, but not, I don't think any of them, like, lit the world on fire. Sure. None of them were Pokemon Go. Yeah. yeah. For example. Exactly. Um, all right. So what else we got here in terms of Nintendo hardware? So you had the SNES Classic. Yeah. 
um, came out late late this year, um, and uh, a a better launch. Right than the NES Classic the year before. We're Mark is not it is not willing no, to be charitable I, with no, you on no, that No, I completely agree. I mm-hmm. was getting ready. To, like we had such a, I guess, unique experience, and that our pre order for the SNES Classic was <laughs> super smooth, like uh-huh. effortless. Right, and this um, is another one that you can go back to a previous episode and hear us discover <laughs> that the pre orders are available. Yeah, we stopped recording. Stop recording. Place the orders, and then come back and gloat a little bit about <laughs> <laughs> having the pre order. But like. But you're seeing them like uh, appear in stores now. Um, yeah, like as we yeah. like before Christmas, Amazon had a big restock that yeah. lasted for like an hour. Um, today, when we were recording this, uh, it was available on GameStop. Yeah. So so it's it, it's out there. You can get it. It's got a brand new, not brand new. It's twenty whatever years old Star Fox game. <laughs> um, that was crazy. Yes, that was. Absolutely nuts. After so many years of, you know, like leaked ROMs onto the internet and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, almost th- this like mythical status. Right. Star Fox 2 is just there, available right. for everybody. And now you too can own it and never play it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's right there with Star Fox 1. Right. right. Yeah. They're, they're both really tough to go back to. Um. And then uh, the, we saw new 3DS hardware this year, the new 2DS XL. Yeah, another kind of like surprise. Again, a, Nintendo kind of going against the narrative that had been built for it, mm-hmm. um, that the 3DS was sunsetting, you know, that with the Switch, we don't need the 3DS. And here they are like making a new 2DS of all things. Yeah, one that closes. And yeah, it's a... Uh... And they su- they supported the the 3ds and 2ds like crazy this year. So did they? I, I mean, think so. I, I I guess you're you're probably right. So <laughs> I know you probably are. I just don't Caved really immediately. I just don't really have. The, well, I was going through my head. We were just talking about Fire Emblem Echoes, right? Fire, yeah, Shadows of Valencia. So that was like right? early in the year. It had a whole Pokemon game. Right. Two of them, in fact. Right. Well, a, a pair of Pokemon games. It had s- Metroid. Right. A, a a great Metroid game that was super fun. Um, there was uh the remake of Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Fire Emblem Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors, which also came out on that platform. Ever Oasis, my God, Ever Oasis, Mark. Uh, there was also the um Box Boy trilogy came out this this year too in uh the states. So like, I know it's not a a tidal wave of games, but we just named like six without really thinking about it, six, right? Six like fairly solid titles yeah yeah so okay so they did support it remarkably well for having launched like a big mario party 100 title another one that's right um yeah so like a lot of games a lot of like nintendo games uh coming out on on 3ds you're right this is probably one where i'm just like projecting my own feelings onto it where i'm like i think the only one of these i personally picked up outside of box boy was uh metroid metroid i think yeah. that's the only one i picked up um i i also played fire emblem um oh and i guess i played a lot of mario and luigi superstar saga so i i spent a a decent amount of time playing with my uh 3ds this year but um oh man and chicken wiggle oh man i love that chicken wiggle no you didn't i liked it to a point <laughs> thank you for calling me out on that <laughs> I was mostly remembering it, um, and my mouth said I loved it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's a it's a tough it's a tough platform to go back to now that the um, now that we have the the Switch, you know, where it's like, do I want to pack two different portable Nintendo systems with me when I get on a plane? And, no, and not just like the how am I supposed to hold all these games problem, but right. also just it, you know, it's an it feels ancient at this point. Yeah, you know the it's slow. Mm-hmm. Even even the new ones comparatively. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean the the one of the I think great things about the Switch has been uh, just the ability to it goes to sleep. It doesn't drain battery power. You can start it right back up. And especially when you're in the middle of a long game like Zelda or Mario or Xenoblade or whatever, um, that you're just like instantly back in it, instantly back in it, um, is insane. Well, and even but even when a game looked great on the 3DS, yeah, like I think Metroid: Samus Returns mm-hmm. is a great looking game. 
for the 3DS hardware, but all I could think was, I just want to be playing this on the Switch. Yeah, I just look so much better on the Switch. Switch. Right, right, right. And then I could throw it up on my TV, and it would be beautiful. Yeah. Um, last little piece of like h- hardware. Let's call it hardware. Um, Nintendo continued to uh, put out Amiibo this year. Our cup overfloweth. Yeah, but uh, uh, I have purchased 24 Amiibo this year in 2017. I didn't buy everything that came out this year, um, but a lot of stuff came out this year. We we've got we've got a bunch of them on the table right now. They're standing in like a battle formation, or I guess more like a senior photo. They're up in the bleachers type thing. Yeah, that's right. Like arranged by height. <laughs> um, the but, guardian uh, from uh. Breath, of the, Breath of the Wild is in the back because he's the biggest. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the the amiibo that came out this year. Um, I guess we can start with the uh, the Breath of the Wild ones, right? Because um, there were a bunch that came out, you know, day and date with Breath of the Wild and with Switch. Um, Mark, I don't know about you, but when uh, I was standing in line to get my Switch uh, from the toys or the Best Buy at midnight. Um, people had like pre-orders for everything that they were like getting a switch. They're getting a pro controller. They're getting Zelda and they're getting every single amiibo. Um, I sort of piece that together over time later, but like there are a lot of just like extra pieces of plastic that people were, <laughs> were buying with this thing. Um, so at the time it was the guardian, uh, Archer link, rider link, a Bokoblin, and Zelda. Um, and they all had, you know, different in-game functionality for breath of the wild. Um, but mostly they're just like, I feel like they're just cool statues, right? I mean, when we were getting the Amiibo out, uh, you know, picking out the ones that were released this year, yeah, we, we're just like having them all in a box with the ones that had come out previously just really gives you a sense of how good Nintendo has gotten at making Amiibo. Yeah. Like the new ones compared to the like original ones are, the st- contrast is so stark. Yeah, I mean, e- even when uh, they they continue to have like these uh, you know little design features that uh, are like clear things to like help the the character steady themselves, they're integrated so much better. Uh, with maybe the exception of um this thing coming out of Urbosa's butt, um, but like, you know, like e- everyone has like a, a little bit of a support on them, but they still just like they look real good. Um, so yeah, uh, very recently, just at the end of the year, here we got. The, the four champion amiibo um, from Breath of the Wild. Um, and uh, so that like kind of uh, rounds out the Zelda ones. We saw a new Splatoon amiibo, um, a trio that basically uh, matches the, the trio that came with the original Splatoon. Um, Mario Odyssey, we got uh, the wedding versions of Bowser, the princess, and Mario, and they all look super good. Um, Metroid. We were talking about Metroid before. Uh, there's a an actual Metroid amiibo, which is squishy. Mark, if you would please squish. <laughs> um, and then there's you know the the Samus amiibo as well, um, and uh, a a pair of um, Fire Emblem uh, amiibo on top of that. And uh, there's another pair of Fire Emblem amiibo that I don't have here for from Warriors. Uh, and we also saw the final rounding out of the um, Smash Brothers amiibo with uh, Cloud, Corrin, and Bayonetta uh, finally coming out in Amiibo form. Yeah, so weird those were delayed for so long. Yeah, it is a little weird. I mean, I wonder if they were just... I don't know. One thing that was really cool... Mm -hmm. Look, we had had Metroid Amiibo before. Or we had 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 a... like With Smash. I don't know that anybody was expecting that 2017 would be the year that Metroid... Like had a resurgence. Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't have expected it. Cause do you remember at E3 oh, when God. not only yeah. was Metroid Prime 4 announced, but Metroid Samus Returns was announced for the 3DS coming out like two months later. Yeah, and it was three an, months later. It was announced in like the Treehouse live stream after <laughs> after their E3 event. It wasn't even in the event proper. Um yeah that's that's nuts. And uh, you 100%ed Samus Returns. I did. I did. It's the only Metroid game I've ever 100%ed. So uh, I loved it. Welcome back, Metroid. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, so exciting to see something like that come back. Basically, you know, we talk all the time about how Nintendo doesn't like to give people what they want. 
yeah, that two, they're withholding. Yeah, 2017 kind of bucked that trend. <laughs> yeah. Of like, they were like, oh, what do you want? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got one of those. Um, all right. Let's move on from from this nice collection of Amiibo. Oh, I guess there's also the uh, the Poochie Amiibo. There's another uh, game that they supported the 3DS with is the uh, Poochie and Yoshi's Bully World. Um, so, like, eh, you know, not that much support. Like, 10 games. <laughs> um, this is also a good year for uh, indie games coming out on Nintendo platforms. Um, not so great for Nintendo for indies coming out on the 3DS. Right. Sorry, Chicken Wiggle. Yeah, by uh, and, and not even to like speak to the quality of the game, but even by uh, the developer's account, indies just stopped selling on 3DS. Yeah, as soon as the people got their hands on the Switch. Yeah, I mean, I th- I think people like playing indie games on handhelds, right? Like w- there was a, a really high attach rate for small games on the Vita, um, and also on uh, 3DS. But uh, you know, uh, the the 3DS audience. There's a lot of overlap with the Switch audience, especially with the people who are like really playing the thing. Um, and so, yeah, that's, I think, just where everyone went for their, for their independent titles. Yeah, it basically became a gold rush oh, yeah. for indies on Switch. And some people got there super early. We devoted an entire episode. Not that it's a bad game, but looking back on it, we devoted an entire episode <laughs> to Snake, Snake Pass. Pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, uh, a cool and interesting game. Um, I have not thought about playing it since, <laughs> but it, it, I mean, if if you remember, um, the Shovel Knight, uh, Shovel Knight with the the new campaign, Spectre Knight, was available on Switch, uh, for launch day, and it was available there before it was available anywhere else. Um, so like my first, 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 like before I got into Zelda, before like I got lost in it, um, first experience with it was playing the whole Spectre Knight campaign. That's how I spent a lot of that first day with the Switch. Which I know is insane. Well, you were uh, waiting for your copy of Zelda to show up. Well, that's right. I had to wait until later in the day because I, I had ordered it um, from Amazon. Um, and uh, luckily, we didn't have to wait for, uh, for it to show up like I know um, some people did. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, what other uh, like big indie games did, did you play on, on Switch this year? I don't know. It was, well, I mean, it was my first exposure to Cave Story. Yeah. And yeah, that's it was right. a great version of that game. Uh, Floor Kids, which we recently picked up, both of mm-hmm. us recently picked up, great game. Golf Story, SteamWorld Dig Two. These are ones that have come out later, but one thing that was really I mean, cool Mighty Gunvolt Burst was really good. Yeah, uh, and that, that was early. That, that came was... out pretty early. Um, we already said Snake Pass, uh, Stardew Valley, which oh, came out over yeah. the summer. Like, th- there are some like Pocket Rumble. Oh wait, oh Pocket Rumble never came out, but uh, Rocket League. I mean, like the the indie games that came out on this thing you know are some of like the best games out there right now um and you know not not all of these are like new on switch or unique to switch or anything like that but like it's just the most fun way to play a lot of these games but also a surprising number of them are like new to switch or first on sure. switch mm-hmm. and because nintendo has done such a good job it se- seemingly mm-hmm. of like fostering relationships with third parties and getting third p- or getting indie game developers excited about the switch they've had two not they don't call them directs they call them nindy showcases right last year and each one had like amazing indie game reveals right yeah yeah and i mean like steamworld dig 2 that was first on on switch and that game that that's a an an amazing game awesome art like super funny like sense of humor um and just like the gameplay loop of like going around and digging and like finding more resources and you know like trying to get just a little bit further into it and then like going back and not to dwell on sale numbers all that much but it uh the success that indie developers have had on switch just creates this like beneficial cycle mm-hmm. where more indie developers want to put their game on switch because the games are selling well and because there are so many great indie games yeah more people are attracted to the platform and it's just it's super exciting for somebody like me who honestly didn't play very many indie games previously but i love playing games on the switch and the switch is such a great platform for indie games yeah that uh i've been picking them up left and right is this an appropriate time to like pivot over to uh, the ACA Arcade Archive uh, Classics, Arcade Classics Archive, Arcade Ar- 
Arcade Classics Archive. Arcade Classics <laughs> Archive is what ACA has to stand for. Um, the sheer number of Neo Geo games that came to the Switch this year uh, is uh, daunting, right? Um, so many of them, and sort of in lieu of a uh, virtual console or any sort of like uh, throwback um, old Nintendo games appearing on this thing, um, we did just in the in the last uh, couple days have um, versus Super Mario Brothers or, or Super Mario Brothers versus I forget where. The verses is in that, um, and uh, regular Mario Brothers verses, um, again as uh, ACA ports, um, but like uh, that it's it's been a good place to find uh, those games too, albeit not exactly what we want in the form of like virtual console something. I would say this is one of the one of the big ways that like the Switch has uh, let us down this year um, that we don't have a way to play. Look, I can't play Super Mario Brothers 3 on this thing. Is it any good? <laughs> I can't play Super Metroid on it. Why do I care about it? Um Yeah, I I it's it's a weird and a thing that they've like not really acknowledged in in any any real way. Right. They acknowledge that they know people are interested. <laughs> and yes. we honestly we've just come to expect it from Nintendo consoles at this point. And we know that mm-hmm. with the, the Nintendo online uh platform whenever that launches right uh whatever the details of the that turnout being their turnout being is that- whatever that ends up however that turns out <laughs> whatever that turn <laughs> whatever that yeah whatever that turns out end out being okay great <laughs> whatever you said yeah uh let's not back down from it let's say <laughs> let's mean what we say. down that's right uh <clears throat> whatever that Looks like. Looks like. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever that looks like, we know that there's going to be NES games in some way. Or Super Nintendo maybe, games. Maybe with online capability. Who knows? Uh, I, I definitely think that's one area that I would like to see them improve in 2018. Or at least provide clarity on what they're thinking. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's talk about games. Let's talk about new Nintendo games. Let's talk about big games on the Switch. Um, we already kind of mentioned this, but, uh, Metroid, um, obviously a a big deal on Switch, nothing on, or or, sorry, on 3DS, nothing on, on the Switch yet, but, um, like the two big, like the two big titles for the year, right? Like the biggest, uh, games ever, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey, um, like Stone Cold Classics, both, both came out in the system this year. Yeah. Just remarkable that. Uh, Switch's first-party software lineup for year one is incredible. There's no getting around it. Yeah, and I mean, it's uh, they're they're both must-have and must-play games. Um, I almost don't care what kind of games you're into. Like they're just they're just that undeniable. Um, and yeah, so like if you just got a Switch and you have uh, you know, one of these games. Pick up the other. If you have neither, pick them both up. Uh, they're they're both great games. And you know, when when Zelda was basically all we had on it, uh, I did not feel like the system was letting me down at all. You know, I was like, yeah, you're the Zelda machine. I'm happy with that. Fair deal. And even scattered throughout the year. So those were kind of like the huge titles that bookended mm-hmm. 2017. But in the rest of the year, there were amazing games as well. Uh. Even as simple as just Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah. Well, yeah. The definitive version of an Mm -hmm. already great game. Yeah. The definitive version of a game that uh, had already, like, it was already the definitive, like, game in the series. Um, And then just, like, doubling down on that and making it even better and more, like, feature rich and more beautiful. Uh, And, oh, you can take it and play it anywhere you want. Um, but yeah, the, uh, there's, uh, I mean, continuing kind of in that same vein, Splatoon 2, uh, you know, is uh, a, a reiteration of the original Splatoon, but with more more stuff, more game modes, um, and man, what a great fun game Splatoon is, right? Um, we haven't really been pulled back in for uh, the Splatfests like I think we would probably like to, but you know, that's just part of life right <laughs> that when someone says yeah play this game for 12 hours over the weekend you're like i can't do that <laughs> um but man what a, what a, what a cool game and what a cool like corner of the nintendo world to 
um, be like perpetuated into this generation. Yeah, and cool to see their plans for continuing support. Yeah. You know, like Splatoon 2, because of the Splatfest, because of the new game modes that continue to be added, new weapons, new levels, it's always fun to go back to whenever you do. Yeah. Uh, and we also got introduced to a, a couple of new weird Nintendo games mm-hmm. that I don't, you know, nobody could have seen coming, like Arms, like Snipper Clips, mm-hmm. like One Two Switch, like One Two Switch. We can we can leave One Two Switch. <laughs> you know, some we never want to see again. Right. So, some we will talk about. You know, later when we're talking about Nintendo Land. And right. And we music. <laughs> yes. All of these things that were and are no longer. <laughs> um. But like. Um, Arms, you know, received a, a bunch of support. Uh, I, I know they're they're done updating it now. Um, that's gonna get balance patches, but you know, no more content updates. Um, in the future, but um, they supported it from its launch until uh, you know, December here. Um, with <clears throat> new content, new stages, new characters. Um, and it's an interesting like take on fighting games. Um, of kind of continuation of like the Punch Out series in like a weird sideways kind of way. Um, it's also just fun to see Nintendo mm-hmm. uh, creating new things and taking risks and doing things that we weren't expecting. Yeah, and filling it with new characters, too. Like, they invented a bunch of new characters for ARMS that aren't, um, you know, like, it, I, I feel like it would be so tempting to put, like, Mario in there or, or something. Um, and But, like, everything in there is, like, all new, has its own sense of style, great music. Um, and you know, like people got into that game and it's like, it's a, you know, sold over a million copies, like S- still feels organically Nintendo as yes. well. Like you could totally see spring man or ribbon girl in smash in the future. Right. Weird that there aren't any amiibos of, of them. Yeah. That is super weird. Uh, and I wonder if that's ever going to change. We don't know anything about the future of amiibo outside of there are three more shovel Knight amiibo coming out, but beyond that, we don't know anything else about amiibo for 2018 i mean i I would assume oh you're not saying that they're gonna stop making amiibo Uh, i'm just saying that as of right now we don't have any more information that's all huh do you think they would i mean i guess i was gonna say oh there's like an nfc reader in like built into the switch so it'd be weird to stop supporting them or to stop making them right but who knows who knows (laughs) <laughs> Who knows what Nintendo wants? Also, like people buy these things up, uh, especially like the 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 cool ones or like the the kind of interesting ones. And I think maybe Nintendo's starting to actually zero in on what that means. Because um, you know, if you go to any toy store right now, you'll see an aisle full of Animal Crossing amiibo that have been sitting there for a year. Um, but I think they've figured that out now and aren't really making those uh, in in those kind of quantities anymore. This year, we also saw some really cool and interesting and I would say unexpected third-party games show up on the Switch. Yeah, a, a bunch a, a bunch of them, right? Um, so like Skyrim, L.A. Noir, Doom, all within like a week. <laughs> um, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which is uh, sort of peerless, right? That there aren't really... Um, other third-party, um, like, big games developed exclusively for Switch, right? Um, and I keep, like, I really like that game. I finished it. Um, I bought the season pass, even though I'm probably never going to go back to it. But what a game. Um, I, I would love to see more developers kind of, like, take take their cues from, uh, you know, uh, Ubisoft there and, like, try to do something similar. Do you mean a collaboration with Mario? Because that's a high bar. I understand that. But I mean, uh, just like develop something for the Switch, right? Like something big for the Switch. Here's another thing that came out this year was the uh, demo for uh, Project Octopath Traveler, um, which is sort of like a big buy-in from Square as a like Switch exclusive game. Um, And, you know, it's uh, Square, so that'll probably come out on something else at some point. but yeah, just like something like that that is big and meant for this system. Uh, what we Mark, also had three yeah. Fire Emblem games. Yeah, three Fire Emblem games. We've talked, I think, about all of them in in some capacity or another. But that that's another weird thing that's come out of Nintendo this year. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes Warriors uh, and Warriors was on both 3DS and Switch. 
and uh, uh, Shadows of Valentia. Yeah, Fire Emblem went from an almost dead franchise to Mm -hmm. one that Nintendo's leaning on heavily, although I think Warriors was kind of a huge bust for them and uh, Koi Tecmo. Yeah, I mean... Also, we had a Xenoblade Chronicles game come out. Yeah, that's another thing that happened, um, and that people who are into those games, uh, you know, are sing its praises i'm having a hard time getting into it as i figured i would um but yeah that's another like 100 hour rpg that uh, appeared on this thing it's this was also a year of just like nintendo delivering on its promises mostly (laughs) Uh, but you know you had all of these so many games announced in that january switch presentation including i think xenoblade chronicles yeah which was dated for holiday 2017 and immediately, everybody was like, there's no way all of these games are coming out yeah, when some, they say they're going to come delayed. out. Right. Uh, and they didn't. Like, everything came out yeah. when they said it was going to. With the exception of Pocket Rumble. With Man, the exce- uh, which, you know, that's not on them. Uh, it might be. Well, it Man. might be, actually. Man, I want we- that Pocket <laughs> Rumble. I want it so bad. Um, all right. Should we move on to what we think is in store for us for 2018. I think so. I mean, 2017 was a banner year for Nintendo. Can you even hope to, like, uh, surpass it? I mean, next year, I expect that we get one Kirby game and a kick in the teeth, <laughs> and that's it. And we not even the Yoshi game? The Yoshi no, game's getting really Yoshi, Yoshi getting, uh, delayed. delayed. Um, no, but I mean, it's, it's so interesting to think of, you know, I, I was at uh, PlayStation Experience this year, and I went to a panel for uh, that the Sucker Punch guys were doing, talking about the trailer for Ghosts of Tsushima um, that they had put out at, at E3. Um, and that game is not going to come out for, like, three years, probably. Um, so, like, I'm excited about that game, and I think it's going to be cool, but, like, I can't believe I'm seeing a trailer for it and that I'm going to a panel where they're talking about it now, whereas Nintendo... A panel for the trailer. Yeah, and it was indulgent, <laughs> and I shouldn't have been there the whole time, but I was drinking a beer and hanging out with my buddy Pete, so it was fun. Um, Nintendo showed us everything in January and then delivered it. Um, you know, where I was saying, like, how could they possibly follow up 2017? Um, but, like, we're going to see something in January. We're going to get a direct or something along those lines um, that is going to have a lot of games in it. And, you know, we've got some idea of what some of that might be, um, but I am totally willing to believe that there will be big surprises for next year. Well, they keep talking about new IP, Yeah, how they want, you know, they're working on and are looking forward to introducing new IP Mm -hmm. on the Switch going forward. And, like, just like ARMS took us all by surprise, I'm kind of expecting something similar. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Some, Yeah, something literally unpredictable. Um, but in the name of having a conversation, let's try to predict some things. <laughs> right. Well, look, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, he- heavy hitters that Nintendo has in its stable that they have not said anything about that we just all assume are coming eventually. Sure. Well, I mean, that's the, there are, uh, I think a, a trio that are imminently coming that we know are on their way. And I'm talking about Fire Emblem, Pokemon and Metroid Prime 4. And Pikmin, even though never like officially mm, announced, point. like Miyamoto is always talking up the fourth Pikmin game. Right. Pikmin 4 is out there. Pikmin 4 is out there. Yeah. And we don't think it's uh yo Pikmin. What's the name of that game? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey Pikmin. Hey Pikmin. What you doing Pikmin? <laughs> hey, hey Pikmin, what's going on? <laughs> baby uh no in fact we know it's not that game okay yeah um, did that game come out yeah it did there's another 3ds game well okay <laughs> i mean it was I mean, not... technically right but yeah it is a game <laughs> um but uh yeah so those uh those four games or at least th- those three um with like pikmin you know notwithstanding um we know are coming to the switch at some point um is that going to be 2018 or 2019 who knows? We also know, like, Bayonetta 3 is coming at some point. Bayonetta 3 is coming out next year, along with... Uh, well, we don't of... know that it's coming next oh, year. you're right. You're right. Sorry. But maybe. The, the ports of uh, 1 and 2 are coming out next year. But, um, I mean, you also have Smash Brothers, which we have heard nothing about. And, you know, everybody assumes is coming in one form or another. Yep. Um, there are... Uh, there's bound to be an Animal Crossing game. Um, uh 
coming out at some point. Uh, maybe Star Fox, Mario Maker, like who knows? Um, I'm I'm a pretty big proponent of, or I, I don't think Nintendo is going to be doing too many Wii U um, ports uh, go, going into the next year. I could be wrong about that. Like if they need to buy some time and like put out, you know, 3D World and Mario Maker and Star Fox Zero or whatever, that could happen. Um, but I think that they are more future-minded than that. Um, the, the only real port that we've gotten from Nintendo is uh, ARMS. Not ARMS. So much as <laughs> Mario Kart, Mario Kart. We also right. had a uh, Pokemon tournament. Yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, the, so the, those two, um, but especially as we get later into the system's uh, life cycle, I would be surprised to see. Right, it's easier to do in like the first year. Yeah, harder to do in like the second and third. Right, and you know, a game like uh, Mario Maker already saw a release on the 3DS as well. So it's you know, how many times are you gonna put the game out? So. You know, but there are a lot of wild cards out there. Mm. You know, Zelda has kind of become a yearly franchise. It's been a while since we've seen a Link Between Worlds type game. Would sure. love to see something like that on Switch. We still don't know what Retro's working on. Yeah. Whether it be Donkey Kong or not, Donkey Kong is still a franchise that people yep. are interested in. Uh, Yeah, that's... Yeah, there's, there's so much. And just like thinking about... We listed a bunch of uh, 3DS games that came out this year, and if all of those resources are now being diverted to making uh, Switch games, like we could be swimming in AAA titles uh, next year. What about an N64 or Game Boy Classic Edition? Yeah, uh, w- would love to see either of those. Uh, although I, uh, we talked about the uh, N64 Classic Edition, Nintendo 64 Classic. Seems like I don't know how they do it. Yeah, I don't know how they do it either. Um, but yeah, Game Boy Classic. Give me that Game Boy Classic. Ooh. Uh, we have Travis Returns, the No More Heroes kind of like spinoff game. Yeah, looks supposed to be coming out in 2018. Super we've weird. Seen it only the tiniest little bit about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and hopefully, fingers crossed. One thing I would like to see is more third party support. Well, we know Western we can ex- third party. Yes, because uh, we know we can expect more third party support from Capcom and uh, Square, Square Enix. Square Enix. Uh, that's again, check your bingo cards. That was Capcom, <laughs> so go ahead and mark it. Um, but yes, from uh, uh, so uh, Machine Games, Wolfenstein Two is going to be coming out um, on on Switch next year. Uh, but yeah, we it'll be interesting to see how other third-party uh, developers uh, support this thing going forward beyond, like, the Nindies, which are, or the any indie, doesn't have to be under that banner, um, seems to be doing so well on, on the platform. Well, and Ubisoft saw a lot of success with Mario plus Rabbids. Yeah. Um, it was the first Mario game on the, <laughs> on the system, which is crazy. It's, well, other than Mario Kart. Sure. It seems like uh, Bethesda has seen uh, reasonable success mm-hmm. with their Doom and Skyrim ports. Um, I don't know. There's just like a lot of games that I, you know, I think it's gonna be hard to put the uh, like a Red Dead Redemption Two, sure, on Switch. Yeah, I think we are st- we are still going to see a lot of stories like that where it's like these games are coming to uh PS4 and Xbox One, um, and not to Switch. But I think anything that's like, I think we're going to see a lot of games that are aren't quite in that like triple A caliber that are just like a little bit uh, lower in quality or less graphically intensive or whatever um, that come out on all three major platforms, but like lead on Switch. I I I would love to see that. Yeah. And I also think that there is room for these uh, <clears throat> big graphical showcases to make their way to Switch, maybe in like a. Uh, compromise is the way I'm looking for, is the word I'm looking for, but you know, like Doom is super fun on Switch. Like yeah. Bethesda showed it can work, and uh, the developers of Panic Button can show that it does work, and presumably we'll see that with Wolfenstein 2 as well. Yeah, but it does require work, you got to do something to it. Yeah, and I mean, even uh, I'm thinking about like um. Dragon Quest Builders is is coming out next year on on Switch. Oh yeah, we're supposed to see Dragon Quest uh, Eleven on this thing. We're gonna be lousy with Dragon Quest games, but I mean, like that that's a a current you know console generation game that is gonna be coming to. So like they don't all need to be um, 
the these sort of like graphical showcases your ghost of Tsushima, for example <laughs> um but like you know persona 5 came out on uh playstation 3 so like even games that are uh you know in the running for like um you know playstation 4 like game of the year whatever uh can should be able to run on this thing uh no problem uh, so it, it makes it for a, a super exciting year um if totally unpredictable at this point i know we haven't even you know uh mentioned the possibility of some sort of hardware revision right and i don't i think next year would be early for that um but yeah i think by like 2019 also i mean seems holiday early, but... 2018 would be about 18 months for hardware revision for like i mean for like a uh 3ds xl type sure, sure. you know like bigger battery more memory and then they price drop the switch i mean i don't know what do i know trying to predict what nintendo's going to do is impossible a Can't fool's be done. game <laughs> it is a fool's game and here we are also we didn't even mention uh or maybe we did just kind of sideways but there is a uh, a kirby game and uh, a yoshi game that are uh, explicitly coming out yeah it's hard for year. me to be like super excited about either of those but that, that yoshi game is gonna be fun man i'm excited about the yoshi game <laughs> um as long as it's got like two player co-op um like epic yarn uh, i'm gonna be all about that bad boy uh yeah there's just it'll i'm looking forward to an exciting year yeah i can't imagine that it'll match 2017 um but i don't know that i mean this in, in my mind has been one of the strongest years for gaming uh just period um and also, and really, I just, I, you know, it doesn't matter if 2018 is not as strong. Yeah, great point. It, if it does not have two Game of the Forever contenders. <laughs> Game of the Forever. <laughs> um, Mark, I'm glad that we don't have a conversation about what we think the best game of the year was, because that's arbitrary to me. But do you have a best game of the year? <laughs> right, because, you know, we don't grade games, but if we but did. But if we did. No, no, no. You know what? Scrap this. Who cares? Let's. <laughs> we we said like uh, earlier in the episode, like uh, if um if you own a Switch, you know, absolutely pick up uh Mario and Zelda. That's sort of that's like uh that's that's stupid advice. Everyone has that, right? Um, what games have you found on the Switch that uh if someone you know just got it for Christmas um and is like looking around for games that aren't like obvious games that they know they should pick up because you know they're the game of forever contenders um what what would you recommend i'm gonna give big ups to cave story which yeah. is, a, is a game that's been out for like 10 years on you know any platform you can uh swing a rat at mm -hmm. but sure. swing them rats but it's uh is this was my first time playing it it's a gr g seems seemingly a great port mm -hmm. of a really awesome game uh yeah definitely worth your time definitely worth picking up yeah, um, and I, I would so uh, I would add um, Stardew Valley to that. A another game that has been available on uh, other platforms, basically all other platforms. Um, but man, playing that thing on the go is uh, satisfying uh, and you know perfect. Like it's it, it's at home um, on on that uh, on that hardware. I'm I really enjoyed my time with Doom. Mm -hmm. Like I thought that was amazing. I would recommend picking that up. Uh, so. Yeah, there's just so many, so many games on this thing. Um, I still want to get Shovel Mighty Knight. Gunfold Burst. Yeah, that's a fun game too. Um, yeah, I mean, I almost uh, obviously you can go wrong, but I almost feel like you can't go wrong. <laughs> um, and pick up that uh, Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. That's a good game. And of course, Splatoon. If um, uh, if oh yeah, but I was considering those one of those the uh, one of the obvious yeah. ones. All right, well, that, never mind then. <laughs> Uh, all right, Mark, let's, uh, let's close out our discussion here of the year in review. And that's going to do it for this episode in this year of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Thank you so much for listening, as you have all year long, I assume. <laughs> right um, there on Tuesday mornings at 12 a.m. Pacific time. And Thursday mornings uh, at 12 a.m. Pacific, Pacific time. Pacific time. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be back with our regular format next week. Um, news and topic, just like we've always done in the past. Uh, my phone just started uh, talking to me. I don't know why. Um, what was I even saying, Mark? Who can remember? 
Uh, thank you review. so much for listening. Yes, yes, thank you so much for listening. Rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff on Apple Podcasts. Um, follow us on Twitter. We are at Nin Cart Society. Did we leave anything out of this year? I don't think we did, but maybe we did. Um, you can email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Uh, and all of that uh, makes us feel good and helps us out. You can be part of the show and participate with us. And, you know, we like all of that. If you like Mark and Mind's opinions, you can uh, check out our comic review discussions on retconpunch.com. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by 8 Betty. You can find more of his music by going to 8 or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying Happy New Year. Network.